of course, Twitter went nuts and people got stuck into me. The YouTube comments went alive saying, yes, well, that doesn't really make any sense. So in a previous video, which I'll link maybe here, here, some, somewhere up at the top, depending on what YouTube does, I spoke about our ability to work out the number of distinct values by doing a one pass through the table. And I spoke about a hash function. And just briefly, effectively, let's say I'm trying to work out the number of distinct colors in a set, then I would take each color, I would simply put it through a hash function, and that hash function would take a color, come up with a number result take the next color, put it through the next color, and so forth. At the end of the exercise, the number of buckets I have is the number of distinct values. In this case, I've got nine. In the first video, I said, with a little bit of smoke and mirrors, that's how we work it out. And of course, Twitter went nuts and people got stuck into me. The YouTube comments went alive saying, yes, well, that doesn't really make any sense because if I have 16 million distinct colors, then that's gonna give me 16 million distinct hash numbers, which means I've got a sample size and a memory consumption, etc., just as big as the original problem. How do we solve this? To use a very loose term, I'll call it, it's a magic hash function. Now, that's a little bit of a loose definition again, and I recommend it once again, go check out Hyplog algorithm. But what we do is, is as we start using up our available resources, we do a divide and conquer style of approach. So in this case, let's say I've got lots and lots of different colors. What happens now is as I burn lots and lots of hash values, eventually the number of hash buckets I've got is getting too large. After all, I'm trying to work out the number of distinct values without having to keep a record of every single value in the table. So what I do is I split the amount of buckets I have. So in this case, I've hit some threshold and what I do is I say, okay, let's discard the top half and I'll keep the lower half. And I'll put the next set of colors through the hash function. Now they only get kept if they go into the lower half. As that starts to once again fill up with more and more hash numbers, that itself might get too large. So I'll split it again and so forth. So at any point in time, as the number of hash numbers that I'm building as I scan my table starts to grow to a size that I've deemed to be too large, I throw half away and keep just one half of it. That keeps the memory allocation down to a low number. But of course, how do I then work out the number of distinct values? Well, at the end of the exercise, if I count up how many times I had to cut my hash allocation in half, then the number of distinct values I've got remaining in my small hash allocation, if I multiply that by two to the power of the number of times I did splits, I've still got a reasonable approximation of the hash size. There's a little bit more intricacy and complexity in there, but you get the idea. As I start burning more and more hash buckets, I'll throw half away, remember that fact that I've thrown some away, and keep looking at the number of distinct values in the remaining half. I'll chop again, chop again, and that becomes a exponential multiplier when I'm coming for my number of distinct values. We can do a really rudimentary demo of this. I'll create a table called one pass, and I'll simply grab the first character out of every single line from DBA source. So there's gonna be lots of duplicates in there, DBA source being the total of all the PL SQL language stored in the database. Now, so we can get an idea of how good our algorithm is, we'll actually go ahead and work out the true result. As you can see on this database, the number of distinct values is 80. Now I'm gonna build a simple algorithm here. Now, assuming we're using mostly just the ASCII character set, we can probably assume that the maximum amount of distinct values we're ever gonna get is probably from zero to 127 in terms of distinct ASCII character codes. Thus, with 127 buckets, I could probably take care of the entire distinct set of values. But to mimic the concept of large numbers of distinct values having to take some sort of compromise, what I'll do is I'll say, can I work out the total number of distinct values, which we know is 80, from this possible range set of 0 to 127 in terms of the ASCII code using only 16 possible sizes in my hash buckets. As I cycle through all these characters in my source data, I'm probably going to hit more than 16 distinct values. I'm going to sort of fill up this size. Every time I get to 16 buckets filled up, I'm going to throw away half and then move on again. If I fill up another 16, I'll throw away half again. 
So at no point will I use more than 16 buckets, and I'm gonna try to see how good this algorithm is. So here's the program I'm writing. It's gonna be a very simple piece of PL SQL, and we're not gonna do anything sophisticated here. As I said, we only need 16 hash buckets across a range of 128 possible characters. I'm gonna define this thing called a synopsis, which is the a number of entries I'm holding in memory. That's my hash buckets. Declaring minval is how I'm gonna decide what hash buckets I'm going to be assigning values to. It starts off at zero, which means I can use hash buckets all the way from zero to 127, but the moment I get 16 of them filled, I'm going to discard some of them. The very sophisticated hash function I'm going to use is just the ASCII function. That's hardly spectacular, and in real situations, the hash function is more sophisticated, but this will do for our demo. As we pass through every single character in this one pass table, I'll find the ASCII character and use that to assign the hash bucket. If the number of hash buckets now exceeds 16 that are in use, I'm going to simply move my minval along to throw away half of the values. So because I've got a minval, it could go from zero to 127. If I hit my match bucket size of 16, I'll go from zero to 64. I've thrown away the bottom half. And then what happens is I'm only gonna use hash buckets if the ASCII value sits between min value and the ceiling, which is 127. So we'll give that a run. And as we can see, we did a couple of iterations where we had to throw away the lower half. But at the end of it, I ended up with the number of distinct values times two to the power of the number of times I did that split. And I ended up with 88. As you remember, our original correct value was 80. So even though I only used 16 buckets out of a theoretical maximum of 128, I still got very, very close to the correct result. That's a much smaller scale version of the true algorithms that we use in working out one pass distinct values. So I hope that this demo proves to you that even though you're only using a limited amount of memory to capture values as they get passed in my one pass distinct algorithm, I can still end up with a very accurate result. In real life, the hash bucket size is much, much larger and the hash function is more sophisticated than just ASCII, but the same principle applies. Less memory utilization, no sorting, no massive chunks of temporary table space, and still a very accurate result for the number of distinct values in a given column in a table.